Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another review roundup. I've done a couple of review roundups in the past. It's essentially just a bunch of reviews shoved into one video when I don't think the reviews could probably be a video on their own, or if I just don't have time to do a video on their own. We've got a lot of products here. We got some blushes, some foundations, concealers, eyeshadow palettes. We've got a little bit of everything, so let's jump right in. Let's start with the dud of the group so that we can end on a high note, shall we? Um, the Tatcha Silk Powder. So this is the loose powder that Tatcha came out with. I actually finished the entire container. It lasted me about, I wanna say a month and a half. And I do use powder every day. I like to set my under eyes and I like to set kind of my T-zone. I definitely use a lot more powder now that it's getting towards summer because I do sweat a lot and I like to set everything down, right? Um, so overall, the powder, it was a bit grainy, so it wasn't as smooth as I like loose powders to be, kind of like the lower Mercier or even the lower end, um, like the Cody loose powder. It was it was grainier, and the shade was just off. This is definitely too dark for my complexion, which is a bit odd. Normally a translucent powder, if anything, it might be too light on me, uh, but this was pretty dark. So I know they only came out with one shade, so it is a bit odd. I kind of wish they had done like a couple of shades in this, but it did darken my under eyes whenever I did set uh concealer under there so i wasn't a huge fan of that and then overall it just really sunk into my fine lines under my eyes and it just i wasn't a fan especially for how much money this is like this is more money than the laura mercier this is the most ex not the most expensive loose powder i've ever tried because i have tried the givenchy and i like that one a lot but this for how expensive this is i don't like it I'm not a fan i would never buy it again and i don't recommend it unfortunately just hit the dud Let's move on to some better products, shall we? Uh, I picked up the Fenty Beauty Eavesdrops during the Sephora sale, and I have to say, it, I think it's just all right. I do like it for mixing, but to be honest, it's pretty expensive for a mixing medium. It's like about 20 something, 20 something dollars. Um, I did wear it today. I've been mixing this with a lot of my foundations. Today I mixed it with the Milani Glow uh, Skin Tint. I've mixed this with the Estee Lauder. I mixed it with higher end foundations and drugstore foundations. And it does a really good job of lightening and helping actually match me better, especially when it comes to like these kind of light skin tints, which is another great thing. Cause there is a, um, a skin mixer or a skin mixer, a foundation mixer that I like, but it is fairly full coverage. So if I add that mixer to something light, like a skin tint, it will add more coverage and make it um, make it more full coverage or medium coverage, depending on what you start with. Um, but this being such light coverage, light to medium coverage as it is, you can mix it with skin tints like this and it doesn't affect the coverage that way. So if, if that's what you're looking for, this is probably a really great product for you because I don't think there's anything at the drugstore that is similar in that aspect. But for me and the way that I'm using it and how I like it, I've worn it by itself and I think it works just fine. But to be honest, there are other drugstore skin tints and uh, tinted moisturizers that I'm just liking a bit more and I do think it's just a bit expensive for what it is. I do like it. I am going to keep using it until I finish it, but it just, it seems kind of a bit of an odd price point for what it is and how I use it. Speaking of the Milani Glow Skin Tint, I really like this. Um, today I'm wearing it mixed in with the, um, with the Fenty. It is just a touch too dark for me. This is shade 110. I don't know if they have a shade 100, um, but it is a very light coverage, just kind of even your complexion kind of skin tint. So it reminds me also a lot of the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. It's really comfortable. It wears well throughout the day and it's just like the perfect thing for summer. So I'm actually really glad I tried this out and I hadn't seen this promoted anywhere. I just saw it like in the drugstore one day and decided to pick it up. So I'm glad that I did. <laughs> Next, I have some new concealers that I finally was able to get my hands on from The Ordinary. So I got The Ordinary Concealer in shades 1.0N and 1.0NS. Uh, NS is lighter. It does have the NS is neutral with silver. So this is lighter. Depending on the foundation that I'm wearing, I can wear the NS. But for the most part, I've been using just the 1.0N. This is such an amazing full coverage comfortable concealer. I really only like this as an eye primer and for under my eyes. That's where it seems to work the best. It doesn't sink into my fine lines as much. It works really well as an eye primer underneath a bunch of different eyeshadow formulas that I've tried it with. Um, the only thing is that it, for, it seems to, for some reason, not work as well as a spot concealer. So like down here, I've had some breakouts that I've been covering. I've actually been breaking out my Dermacol to kind of cover those up as spot concealers because that's like the best spot concealer I've ever found. These, it, it doesn't seem to stay in place when I use it as a spot concealer, but as an under eye concealer and like an eye primer, it works 
perfectly. So I don't know if it's just the formula or like my skin types because I do have combination skin. So my skin isn't the same everywhere on my face. So I don't know if that might have something to do with it, but it's an amazing under eye concealer and they're really affordable and I like the packaging. It's like a little squeezy tube. So you can either put it directly on to your um, lower eye area or I use a concealer brush just to apply it on. And then I blend it out with a, uh, a sponge and I always set it with um, either a pressed powder if I'm using it up here or a whatever loose powder that I'm using for my under eyes. So I'm really glad I was able to get my hands on these. I kind of wish I could have gotten them earlier, but I know that they were sold out for a bit because I mean, honestly, The Ordinary has a lot of really great products. And one of the very first videos I did on my channel <laughs> way back in what, 2018, was testing out, oh, I just dropped it. Well, I was testing out one of their foundations because they had just come out with two foundations. So I have, this, this brand has a soft spot in my heart um, and I'm happy to see that they're continuing their um, their quality of products. So definitely like these, we'll keep them, we'll enjoy them. Next, I picked up two liquid blushes during the Sephora sale and they're from Rare Beauty. So I'm actually wearing the purple one today. I blended it out with a stippling brush and then I actually used a powder purple blush on top of it. These are beautiful. I was a little um, like worried about how dark and pigmented they look, but what I like to do is uh, just dab a little bit on the back of my hand and then I use either my fingers to blend it out or a brush. I used a small kind of stippling brush today just to kind of pat it on and then I blend it out with a sponge. It blends out beautifully. It is gorgeous and then I think you can also use these on your lips. Um, so I think I'm going to eventually do a really nice purple monochromatic look with my Lila palette for a pan that palette kind of challenge. I'm definitely going to be using this as blush and as lips and it just I don't know, it just, they work so well and I'm actually very, very impressed. I do think the full price is a little bit much, um, so I am glad I got these during the sale. I don't know if I'd recommend getting these at full price unless you know you're gonna use a liquid blush every day because you'll never go through this product otherwise. <laughs> Next, I have a bunch of liners from NYX. So these are all the, what are they called? These are the Epic Wear Liner Sticks from NYX. Now I picked up a teal one, just like out of curiosity one day, I believe it was in a drugstore. And that was like the best colorful liner for my waterline. I'm actually wearing the green one today. And it stayed all day. And I had not seen a colorful liner do that. Like uh, I've got liners from ColourPop, I've got some higher end liners, but when I put them like inside my waterline, they tend to be gone by the end of a long day. This stayed in place and I was so impressed and I loved it so much that I was like, I need to get more colors. So I picked up a bunch of new colors from the same line from Ulta. And I have to say, I've tested out all of them. They're all just as amazing. <laughs> they stay in my waterline all day and they look beautiful and they really do pop out. You can see the color there. So yeah, I got a green, I got a yellow, I got two of the purples, like a light purple lilac and a dark purple and then a white. One of the best white liners, if not the best white liners I've tried. Fantastic. Um, I know, I think these are about $8-ish if they're not on sale. They're always on sale at Ulta though. Make sure you get them at Ulta. I originally put these in my basket when they were buy two, get one free, which would be awesome. Um, but I think I ended up getting them at a discount I forgot exactly what the discount was, but I know I didn't pay full price for these, but they're amazing. So if you haven't already tried these and you like wearing color in your waterline, check them out. They're amazing. Next, we have a palette that I've raved about for quite a bit. And honestly, like I was not expecting to like this palette that much. This is the Elf and Chipotle palette. I am just so impressed by like the execution of the collab. It is just so well done. It is so beautiful. The shades are creamy and pigmented and they just blend like a dream. And I love the pack. I love everything about this. This is one of the best collabs that like I have seen done. And I'm really glad that I got it because I don't know if it's still available now because I know it was limited edition, but I don't know if they're doing another restock or not. But if they do do a restock, I would recommend picking it up because it's cute, it's unique, and it's actually like as an eyeshadow palette worth it. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we have a palette that I've been playing with for a while now and now... <sighs> I gotta say, like, I, I know it's expensive, but I love it. I love it. This is the Circle Local palette from Natasha Denona. This is one of her most unique palettes ever. I kind of wish she had come out with this as a midi so that more people could try it because this is the full size. So this is one of her $129 palettes, which is unfortunate because I know not a lot of people are going to be able to spend that kind of money on this palette. I am hoping that either a midi or a mini comes out with this color story because it is beautiful. I love the shades. I feel inspired whenever I look at this palette 
the quality is gorgeous. It is it is amazing. And I do like the packaging that is this kind of plasticky packaging as opposed to like the soft, squishy packaging. I'm getting the Leela out of the Leela. So it is different. It, this is plastic and this is kind of the squishy packaging. I like this packaging a lot. It's easy to clean and you've got holes in the back so you can pop out the shades if you want to do um, either rearrange it, which I almost did, but I didn't want to. <laughs> I kind of didn't want to do that because actually here I like how the shades are. Um, but it's just, it's really good. But I don't want to, I don't want to like push anyone to purchase an expensive palette if you don't have the funds to do so. So I would just say, if you can't afford this, uh, keep an eye out because I really am hoping that they come out with a mini or a midi of this. And if they do, I would recommend you pick that up like a hundred percent. Um, but if you have the ability to splurge, if you've got your 500 points and you have some discounts available, I would recommend picking this up, but only if you're, um, are comfortable, let's put it that way, if you're comfortable doing so. So I believe that's it for this review roundup. Let me know down below what you think of these products, if you have any of them, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.